for quite a while, but um, five years ago, we changed it to what's called the uh, Health Scholars. So we've had a pretty good success with our MA program. Um, today, the session is just really a networking session for us to just chat. Um, if you have questions, there is a poll. Um, if you wouldn't mind going back into that um, on the main screen. Um, and I just kind of want to know where you guys are in the process of um, your program. I, I don't know who I'm talking to here. Do we have new people um, it, or are you existing um, programs? Uh, where are you? So take just a second and fill that out. I would appreciate it. And while you're doing that, you get that done. I also went ahead and put some files in there for you. I've got the um, pacing guide with which I use um, this is the new pacing guide for the new medical assistant standards um, that just came out this year. Um, we also have in there for you, um, let's see what else I can't remember right now. Oh, I put in um, the access code to my Schoology course, um, currently revamping that so that it reflects those standards for the medical assistant class. Um, but the first nine weeks is pretty much done. So if you have access to Schoology, I gave you the link um, to the Schoology course, so you can download that um, into your Schoology course um, at your school. I don't see it. Um, it's under the file category. Really? There's a Word document there that says um, Schoology access. Schoology. Everybody uses something different. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Schoology does not is not compatible with um, like Google Classroom. Um, which is, I know, a free program that I think a lot of schools um, use. But um, don't fret. Um, make sure you ask your school because um, come to find out last year, there were several people that didn't know they had access um, to Schoology that ended up figuring it out um, and were able to get access to my stuff. So, all right. So it looks like we're about 50-50. We've got 53% um, so far saying that they're in the program planning phase. And then we've got uh, Forty-seven percent in the first year of the course, so that's great, awesome. Um, so if you um, guys will refer back to the chat room, um, if you have questions, that way we're all not talking over each other. My room host um, is going to be monitoring that um, so that we can um, make sure everybody gets their questions answered. So again, this is just an open discussion for you to get information from me or other teachers here um, that have been doing this program. I've already told you where the pacing guide is, so you can uh, kind of look over that. And if you have questions about it, feel free to ask me. Um, and then I want to talk to you just for a second about digital resources. Um, so uh, I, I use the uh, Medical Assisting as Administrative Clinical Competencies. It's the Cengage book by Michelle Blessy. Um, another big thing that is a digital resource that I use is um, NHA Now. Um, NHA is the company that we use to certify our students from. And I know uh, the previous medical assistant um, trainings that have been offered this week have that. I'll make sure I have that available in the, um, in the files as well. So um, without further ado, uh, this is just a little bit about me. I've been a medical assistant for, uh, well, I worked as a medical assistant for about 12 years. That's actually incorrect. I hadn't updated that um, before I came to work here. Um, the pacing guide with which is in the in in um, the files there is created for an a b schedule however um, we have been switched to a four by four this year um, so uh, basically that pacing guide that i've created um, you will just teach it two weeks at a time so week one and two will be what you do in week one week three and four is week two um, so again that's in there for you so here we go. What questions do you have? Does anybody have anything that's just right off the top or I've got some um, general questions here that you may have questions about. So you can unmute yourself and talk. Everybody, a second here and see if people are typing. Um, as most of my students have already had medical therapeutics, how would you um, go about doing the, the, the medical assisting class since the standards are very similar 
Uh, we're going to rework our plan for next year, but I'm teaching it second semester this year. Okay. Um, I beg to differ on you a little bit there. The medical therapeutic standards, I feel, are very, very different. Um, if you Have you ever taken the test or looked at the, which company are you going to use, that, let's say that first, um, to do the certification? Um, I'm going to look at NHA. NHA. Okay. Everything so, I've heard. Okay, so NHA, um, their test, if you look at their test plan, it's predominantly uh, patient care and then a lot of laboratory and EKG stuff. So you're also going to be needing to pull a lot of information from diagnostics and cardio. Um, so really, I feel like the only standards that correlate with medical therapeutics and the medical assistant program um, are like positioning. Um, and maybe doing the basic vitals, um, if you really hit heavy on that in, the, in, in that course. Um, the, if you look at the pacing guide, for me, um, I start with um, all the laboratory, the physician's office laboratory. So the kids have to know how to do phlebotomy, what all the tubes mean, um, all the different tests, looking at um, the, um, a requisition form, you know, a laboratory requisition form. So I usually start with a lot of that stuff that they've never had before um, and then just work on those same skills that we did, that they did in medical therapeutics with my other co-teacher with, which are the, you know, the, the vital signs, the positioning um, and uh, the beginnings of uh, charting. Okay. I'm, my background is laboratory. So that's why I'm teaching the class. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I mean, that's a huge chunk of the test. Um, and a lot of people I don't think cover a lot on that. I mean, there's like so much information from two chapters of, of this book anyway, um, that pertain to about upwards of 40 questions on uh, the medical assistant test. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I see here, uh, job placement um can you clarify have you a good job placement uh, on that question are you talking about like as in um where am i placing students during the program No, because I understand there's really not a clinical component to it, but have you had students be successful in work once they graduated? Okay, so um, the first two years that I did this program, um, I didn't do clinical rotations, um, and my pass rate was 80%, um, it was actually 80, 85% um, the second year. Um, since then, uh, I have um, now added clinicals to the medical assistant course. So um, I have a business partner um, that uh, works with me and um, they do direct hires from that program. Um, but um, what I do on the flip side of that, because my class is so large, I still have 25 um, in my class um, and they all don't get to go um, to clinics, you know, like every single week. Um, I do it in the classroom. Um, so I borrow students from the drama department. I borrow teachers. I get um, the special needs students. Um, they've started joining in with us last year. And um, we do clinics in the classroom, in our laboratory environment. So um, I have a mock EHR system that I've kind of put together. Um, it's really just paperwork that's in a PDF where kids can type in it and create charts for patients. Um, and they act as if they are the medical assistant. They call the student back, or well, it, the patient back, uh, bring them into their, you know, their room. They do, you know, ask them the questions. What medications are you on? Um, the person that's playing the patient, um, they make it up as they go. So, um, yes, I find that they are still just as successful. Um, they are still just as successful at getting a job after they graduate. Um, as anybody else. Um, it's still, you know, they, they don't have any experience really. Um, they're straight out of high school. They're young. So some of them it's taken two or three, maybe four interviews. Um, but, um, me connecting with my business partners, um, in the area when they now know and recognize when they see Overton high school, um, scholars program, um, 
they they are recognizing my students and now I have business partners calling me saying hey do you have any students that want a job here's our job listing send it out to your students excuse me I have a question yeah all right, hi, uh, my name is Danita Mullins and I'm from um, Germantown Municipal School Districts in West Tennessee. And I actually taught medical therapeutics last year and clinical internships. So with medical therapeutics, my students, the therapeutics class the year before and last year we was, last year was our first year doing clinical internship. Now, with the new class medical assistant, how would you suggest, and I heard you say that you do 25 students in clinicals. Do you do that as a part of the medical assistant class or do you do that as a part of the clinical internship class? Because I know clinical no. internship will only let you do 15 students. 15. Yeah, so that's how that's my workaround. I do not. Um, my class is not coded uh, coded as clinical internship. My my class is code, coded this year as medical assisting. Um, last year um, and the years previous, it was coded as a senior capstone, which that's not some class that everybody has in their school district. Um, so I, I do not fill out work based learning uh, paperwork, um, and I do not have to worry about any of that. I just allow. Um, my students to leave um you know it was a permission slip form that the parents signed at the beginning of the school year that they knew that their student would be leaving the building that they would be going um to the clinical site and our administration uh, backed us on that and said it was fine okay so how do you handle as far as liability like we have to have insurance for our students to go out for clinical internship do you do the same for your medical assisting no okay Okay. Nope. All right. We do not have any liability paperwork. Fine. Um, what we do have is an agreement um, between the business partner and the school district. Um, mm -hmm. And that legal end may have been uh, the liability was most likely taken care of on that end. Um, I do not have to deal with any of that paperwork because the okay. district um, did that in the very first initial agreement when they said, yes, we want to have your students come here. Okay, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then one last question. As yep. far as I, the NHA now, I actually, we pulled, we got it at the end of the year. So we're, we're looking at the standards and of course school was out at, right after spring break. Um, so we did not get a chance to utilize it fully. Do you use that uh, study material along with another book? And if so, what is the other book that you use? Um, um, can you see me? Hold on. Um, no, I can't see. <laughs> okay, this. I'll show you the book um, at the end before we before we close. Uh, okay. Yes, one hundred percent. The NHA portals are really cheap. They're only fifty five dollars, um, right. and that's for you know a subscription for I can't remember how many days. Um, if your school district cannot provide that for you, I would highly recommend that you ask your students to buy that. Um, we did not utilize it the first uh, two years of the program. Um, in year three, we started utilizing it and the difference was astronomical. Um, we started using it because I went on maternity leave year three um, for the whole first semester and that's the reason why we used it. And then the kids were just elated at how, um, it was just an extra supplemental thing because it, they, it can be read to them or they can read it themselves, you know, and it's got all the practice exams. So highly recommend getting it. Um, I will not ever do this program without having it. So it's built into my curriculum that I have on Schoology. Um, the kids use the, utilize the book. They utilize um, the um, modules, and I have it all coinciding together, which modules go along with the chapters of each book. Okay. Um, if you statistically look at NHA's portal, um, if you have access to it as a teacher, um, you can d differentiate um, the testing information. So it's, um, there's 365 now. You can look at all the data from all of high school students only that take the CCMA exam through the NHA portal. And statistically speaking, if a student spends at least two, um, an, I'm sorry, an hour and a half per module, they are 70, I don't know whose phone that is. Uh, they are 70% more likely to um, pass the CCMA through okay. the NHA. And that's, that's data that I can show you, um, and that's presented on the NHA website. So that's the um, that's a requirement that I have for my students, that they spend at least an hour and a half. And some of the modules, I make them spend at least two hours in that on top of all the other book work and, um, and things that I assign um, in the classroom. Okay, so great great question. question. Thank you. Uh -huh.
I know there was a couple, uh, question and like I can't get to the chat right now, but it was something about a hybrid model. So um, I just want to touch base on that real quick. I, uh, Metro National Public Schools, decided not to go to um, in-person learning this year. So I'm going to be teaching virtually. At the end of the school year last year, I was teaching virtually. So again, we stopped in March um, and it was a requirement for my students. They know we set a date and a time. We had a class for an hour every single day. Um, yes, it was absolutely crazy. I used Zoom. I had all the materials from my classroom. I had like a little miniature whiteboard that I brought with me. Um, but because we had Schoology and I already had all of our curriculum built into Schoology, um, things went seamlessly. And um, I'm super proud to say right now, I still have about five more kids to take the test, but I've got 90% 90, 90 pass rate. I've only had one student not pass the CCMA this year. And I'm super stoked about it, especially since we stopped in March um, on an AB schedule. So we were only like, you know, a little over halfway through the year. Are you required to do clinical certifications or do work-based learning in the class followed by clinical internship? Um, I think we kind of touched base on that question already, but I just want to clarify that for this person. Um, I do not have my class coded as clinical in internship. I now have the new code for the medical assistant course. Um, in previous years, I used a course called uh, Senior Capstone, which was like an independent study. Um, and that's how I got away with not having to do the clinical um, internship requirements or the work-based learning requirements. Um, can you upload or send your PDF documents or creating a um, if you're referring to the NHA portal information, um, I can download PDF versions of that, yes, and I can put it um, in, um, I think I can still put it in there as a file when we get done. If not, uh, Gina, if you'll send me an email, I can email it directly to you. Um, I know you said the textbook was Cengage, but what's the title of it? The title of the textbook is Medical Assisting Administrative and Comprehensive um, Competencies. It's by Michelle Bletzi. And um, like I said, before we end, um, I will show you the textbook. Uh, the EHR. Um, so, okay. So the EHR PDFs, I cannot send you that. Um, I actually purchased that from, um, I purchased the license for that from, oh, give me just a second. I think it was on, uh, it was from Pocket Nurse. Um, I can send you a link to the product ID if you'd like. Um, it cost me $300, um, so I'm not going to share that um, willingly, but I will um, I will send you the product link for that. It just came on a little flash drive, all the documents did, um, so that the students were able to create that EHR. Um, what sequencing do your students take the course? Um, students in my program take um, Introduction to Health Science Ed first. Um, then they flow their junior year into uh, the dual enrollment um, anatomy, physiology, medical terminology. And then also their junior year, um, some of them either take medical therapeutics or they take um, diagnostics. I pull from both pathways um, for the medical assistant course. Um, I personally feel that students coming from the diagnostic pathway are more prepared um, for the medical assistant course, the medical therapeutics are. Um, just because um, that laboratory component is so huge, and I cover that in diagnostics, because that's primarily the pathway that I teach. Um, I got put on the medical assistant course because I was a medical assistant for so many years. Um, but yeah, but so it's health science ed. Um, they take the dual enrollment anatomy, physiology, medical terminology course, and then um, they will roll right into the medical assistant course their senior year. Um, some people ask me this, and I'll touch base on it right now. Um, I do not teach um, standards covering medical terminology or anatomy and physiology in, medical, in the medical assistant class. Um, you'll see that if you're looking at the Schoology um, website. Um, it's still listed in the pacing guide, but you can see it's like all jumbled together. So in the textbook that I use for the medical assistant course, uh, medical terminology is two chapters, which is chapter seven and eight. And then the anatomy and physiology is chapters nine through 21. I do not cover any of that material in the classroom. Um, I put that all on the student's responsibility um, because technically all of those students have had 
um, the dual enrollment anatomy and physiology or some, some sort of anatomy and physiology before they come to me. Um, so I'll leave that to them to study on their own because it, there's not enough time in a semester um, to cover all of that material. Um, let's see, can we use the medical assistant code for two semesters? Are you referring to the Schoology course, Jan? I'm not sure if you're referring, you can unmute yourself, Jan, if you, if you can. Um, I'll just go ahead and answer. I just think I see you all referring to that. The Schoology course, you will have access to it um, at any point in time you want. Um, so like I said, it's not complete yet. I've only got the first nine weeks completely done. Um, I have to turn in the second nine weeks to my school district next week. So um, I'm still going to be working on that. But if you will um, just kind of take it a week at a time or as you need it, um, from the Schoology group, it will always be there. It, I will not take it down as long as I'm still um, working for MMPS. Um, I see somebody has put in the uh, the um, ISBN for the Black Sea textbook. Uh, the CT co CTE course credit. Um, no, I am not doing the medical assistant course um, in two semesters. I'm only going to be doing it in one semester. Uh, this year since we're going to be on a four by four. Um, uh, it stresses me out just a little bit. So they're only going to be getting one um, credit for that class. Um, like I said, I've never had to teach it this way. So I feel like I'm going to be pressured a little bit, but um, my district is supporting me in the fact that my students don't have to take the CCMA in December. They're going to allow them to continue studying with me on the side if necessary um, past December into March. Um, if they need it before they actually take the test. But no, you can only use the medical assistant course code once because students can only receive credit for that course one time. Somebody has their not muted, so I'm going to take my screen down for just a second or. Um, and that thank you whoever muted them <laughs> I appreciate that um I kind of want to touch base for those people that um are still in the planning phase of this program um for a second about that so uh, my program started like I said five years ago this is um this will be year six for my program and it was um very small we only started with 10 students um, we did not have those students in a class. Um, I literally met with them during what's called PLT, you know, like their um, extended learning time. So I got to see them like 45 minutes, um, three times a week, and it did not work. Um, I had no way to hold them accountable. I had, I was not prepared, like it got thrown on me three weeks into the school year. Um, so... <laughs> Um, they actually were, we started out with just having a mentor from outside of our school district. So a nurse from a hospital was coming to mentor them. Um, it did not work. Um, I got very upset about it. Um, and so the second year we initiated the class. Um, what I would suggest from you, um, I don't know how many of you are medical assistants um, versus registered nurses or some other healthcare professional. Um, if you are not a medical assistant, I highly suggest that you find someone that is and, and it will allow you to come job shadow them um, for a couple of days because um, the environment that a medical assistant works in is very, very different from an LPN or a nurse. Um, my business partner that originally taught this class with me um, was a registered nurse. Like she'd been a registered nurse for 35 years. And so she was teaching my students things um, that registered nurses need to, needed to know and not what a medical assistant needed to know because they were things that they would not be doing in a medical office setting. Um, and then also she was teaching them things that they wouldn't be doing um, because she thought it was out of their scope of practice when I was like, no, you will be doing that. Um, so if you do not have someone, please um, contact your local 
doctor's offices and see if anybody would be willing to allow you to come in and shadow them to really gauge um, what the medical assistant does so that you have a better idea. Um, the other thing that has made my program so successful is um, what my students have accomplished. Um, Cause a lot, of, a lot of kids really wanted to be in the CNA type program. Um, when we did a lot of market research data, we found out you know, that the job market for the medical assistant was a lot higher. And so therefore that's the reason why we switched over to this program. Um, and, um, now I have so many success stories of students that have graduated from my MA program that have jobs that I bring them back in. Um, and they're making $20 an hour, um, here in Nashville working as a medical assistant at 18 years old, which is, uh, blows my mind. Um, so I'm going back and it says, is your system paying for the testing? Yes. My school district pays. Um, for all, um, every single student to take the CCMA and they purchase um, the NHA portal for my students. Um, we have 55 minute classes all year. Does your MA class need one or two class periods? Um, so my class periods run on a 90 minute um, scale. Um, Melissa, if you are only gonna be seeing your student, if you're gonna be seeing your students every single day, um, I think you can make this work in a 55 minute class period, um, but it's gonna be pretty tight. Um, if you could stretch yours into two class periods, I would absolutely recommend that. So even if you had to have a medical therapeutics class and a medical assistant class and know that those students are in both classes, um, I would recommend that. Um, Robertson County is paying for all certification tests. That's awesome. Um, um, are they paying for it through Perkins? Um, I believe that is not correct for Metro National Public Schools. Um, I think we are getting an outside grant. Um, our CTE district officials um, wrote a grant several years ago um, to pay for our um, certification tests because uh, before the students were having to pay for them and then we wrote a, a one grant and we had some more data that showed that we were a little bit more successful. So the students were only paying like $25 and we were covering the rest. Um, and then as our numbers have grown and sh we're showing the success rate, um, we now have a grant that is 100% paying for all um, certifications throughout our whole district. It's not just for health science. Um, how much does it cost for students to take a certification test and does the school pay for it? Um, the certification test is $155 um, itself and then the um, program for the NHA portal is also uh, an extra $55, I believe. Hey Betsy, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. I'm Ken from I'm Mount Juliet High School, but I'm getting ready to transfer to our new school at Green Hill. And this is our first year um, launching the medical assistant program. Uh -huh. So what advice do you have for us? What is the very first thing we need to do to start, you know, this program to be successful? You need as to well as the, who do you um, have a <clears throat> yeah. contact person for the NHA? Um, um, so, um, login. yeah, so I, um, I can actually email you that if you'll, if you'll, okay. um, actually your principal, Kevin, um, he and I had uh, lots of conversations. Um, he okay. actually, <laughs> I was going to come to work with you actually this year, but, um, I decided not to. Um, oh, so, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I was, uh, he, he, anyway, uh, long story short, he has my email, but, um, okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, um, my email is on this last slide here. Let me get to it. Right, there it is. Okay. Um, so there's my email. Um, her name is Hannah Hannah. Um, she is our account representative. So I will get you in contact with Hannah. Um, okay. She's great. NHA is so wonderful. I mean, literally, if you call the 1-800 number on their website, they answer the phone. It's not any like automated thing. Um, and they're right there and they will help you with, with getting everything set up. Okay, um, yeah, because I've got 30 years experience with medical assistant. I've taught on a college level, and, you know, I know this so much recommendation for that, and I'm trying to dumb it down yeah. to a high school level. Um, but the, the second thing that I would say starting the program is the recruitment process. Um, okay. 
my recruiting, I focus on not only higher level students, but I also focus on those students that I know need this. Um, okay. You know, those ones that think that they're going to be a registered nurse, but I know there's no way they're going to make it through that program. Um, and so I give them this as an alternative and I'm like, baby, you go ahead and go ahead and try to go to college, but right. you've got something to fall back on. Um, so in the beginning, it was really just hard um, and me talking to them one on one and, and making those connections. Um, after I had that first, that's my second year class graduate. Um, I have five students from my, from my second year class that are making $22, like $20 an hour working at Vanderbilt as a medical assistant right now. So um, after I got them hired somewhere, like I videoed them, those girls came back um, and came into my classroom and talked to my students. So I have all these success stories and I've just, year three, I've got success stories and now this is um, year four and year five. I'm bringing these kids back in. Um, the word has spread down. Um, and I now have students that are leaving their high schools and coming to my high school because they want to be in part of this program. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've worked really hard because I've told people this years in the past, my goal is to shut down uh, the technical schools because, um, <laughs> you, know, there's no, you know, there's no point in a student having to pay $15,000 to get this certification when I can give it to them for free or, right. you know, the pay the $200 to take the test. So, um, but the other thing that has made my program so successful is having that business partner. I, St. Thomas is my business partner. They have been my business partner since the get go. Um, and they have helped me make this successful. Having that mentor and having somebody from the outside that's working in the field, um, that is a potential hiring recruitment person, be in their lives every single week with them has made a huge impact. Um, if you Vanderbilt has jumped on course with us um, at Metro National Public Schools, the um, health department, um, Harry Medical Center, um, they have jumped on board. Um, I'm not saying that it would be horrible for you guys to reach out to them, but reach out to your local hospitals and education professionals and tell them, hey, we're starting a medical assistant program. We would like to get in conjunction with you because we want to see about direct hires because they are dying for medical assistance right now. Um, and, and, you know, COVID didn't help the matters any. So having a business partner jump in with your program, I think is absolutely essential. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm going to stop this PowerPoint really quickly so that I can show my textbook. Let me escape out of this. Get back into Zoom. I'm gonna stop the share. All right, can everybody see me now? <laughs> okay, so this is the textbook that I use, the medical assisting, um, and the ISBN. She shared that on there. Um, but this is with Cengage. The awesome thing about Cengage is if you buy the textbook and you can get the teacher access to it, um, you. Um, can uh, they have a test um, creator? Okay, with it that goes along with this textbook. I have never had to create a single test. There are over, I think, like, God bless. I think there's like over a hundred thousand questions built into that program. Um, so um, please, please, please utilize that if your school can give you access to that. Um, we've got about six more minutes left. Um, let's see. St. Thomas is supporting our new program as well. Do your students go to their facilities? Uh, Gina, are you, um, yes, so yes, they, they do go to their facilities. Um, I have three locations, but um, as you probably know, uh, Mr. Corlew will be working with you, and he's super fantastic, and I'm not sure if he's on this call. I saw that he had um, put down that he was going to participate today. Um, he's super fantastic. Uh, you will love working with him, and please don't hesitate to reach out to me because I will gladly share information with you because you are going to be part of the St. Thomas Scholars family, so super excited about that. Um, do you offer the MA course first semester or second semester? So this year, since we're going to be on a new four by four, I'm offering it first semester, um, just due to the fact that this is the first time I've ever done it on a four by four, and I want to make sure that my kids are ready to take the test. So we have that whole second semester after Christmas for them to just come to me, do some independent study, and make sure that they're really, really prepared um, for the test. Uh, code word, go ahead and reach that out. Code word is red, color red. Um, anybody have any last minute questions here? We've got just a few minutes. Again, 
um, beth.wilson at mmps.org. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will gladly, gladly help you. Um, I want everybody's health science programs to be successful, especially this medical assistant, because um, again, my goal is to put the tech colleges out of business. So I'm doing good here in Nashville. Uh, <laughs> I've already got two programs that have been dropped from local tech schools and I'm keeping on working. Can you please add your email? Um, it is on the PowerPoint that's under the files, but it's beth.wilson at mmps.org. Thank you, Jan. Appreciate it. Got about four more minutes if you have any quick questions. Hello? Yep, I'm here. Beth, hey, it's Susie Morrow. Hey. Hey, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. I've actually logged on to the Schoolology site and I'm trying yes. to enter that code. Okay. Where exactly do we click on it to enter it? So you'll click on groups up at the very top and then over on your right hand side, it'll ask you to join a group. Click on that gray button and then you'll be able to type in that access code that's in that green box in that picture that I showed you there. And if it doesn't work, send me an email and I can reset the access code for you. Nope, I found it. Thank you. You're so welcome. Um, so yes, Melissa, it'll be around $200 to pay for the actual exam. Um, and then it would be another $55 for the uh, portal access. Yeah, here's the book one more time. Um, but I can't stress enough how um, how um, the data that you can just get from that NHA portal, how important that is you as a teacher. Because when your kids go in there and you assign them those practice tests and the modules and the quizzes, you can look at the data and see where they're struggling. And the students get feedback from the website as well on what they need to study, um, what exact standards it is that they need to study and work on. It's, it's been fantastic. Um, I, sh uh, I will add the, um, can I show the access code again? Um, the access code, I have not showed it. It's actually in the files um, under this um, session. And when we get finished, you just click on files. There's a Word document that has a Schoology access code on it. Um, and I will put the book information in there as well when we finish. Okay, I have, I have another quick question. This yep. is Kim again. Yeah. Hey, you know how we always, you know, they could stand before the RMA certification or, you know, the AAMA. Yes. Um, with this, how long do they have for recertification for this certification? So NHA, um, they get a per diem certification for one year and it allows them to turn 18 and get their high school diploma. Once they okay. get those, they upload uh, their high school diploma and then their certification is good for two more years without having to renew um, their CEs. At that point, oh, really? they, um, they will have to pay uh, their fees and turn in CEs for another three years. That's awesome. Yes. Okay, I have a question about the Schoology app that yep. you have on here under files. Yep. If I'm not in your district, would I be able to access your Schoology? Yes, um, as long as you have an, a Schoology login, you can access, access it okay. through that um, thing. We've got about 30 more seconds. Okay. It's going to show you. But if you, if you can't get into it and you know you have access to school, G, just um, send me an email. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I appreciate it so, so much. Um, I hope this was helpful. And please don't forget to fill out the survey. And again, the code word is red. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Um, 